All right, we are ready for Unit 5, Systems of Equations. Um, I have the outside of your guys' packet to show you something this time that's a little bit different. Your online practice is actually written here. Um, instead of usually sometimes within the packet, there's a page that has the specific buzz maths listed. They are only listed this time on the outside of your packet. So for online practice for number 14, there are two. There are points of intersection, and there is solving systems of... Uh, equations graphically. Those are two separate buzz maths, so you will need to get a star um, on both of them before doing your check for understanding. Uh, points of intersection is actually the one that we had on one of the previous packets accidentally by mistake, so a lot of you guys may have already started or maybe even already finished points of intersection. So if you have that to show us, we can go ahead and sign off and then you can just move on to the other one. All the other online practices in this unit I believe only have one buzz math associated with it. Okay, so let's turn the page and let's look at concept 14, which is graphing systems of equations. All right, this is a little bit of a review. You guys will look at this and go, wait, I already know how to graph a line. I know where to put my first dot and how to draw the slope and, and draw the line through it. So hopefully this will kind of feel like a review lesson. So we are going to look at the first equation, y equals 3x minus 2. Where do you put your first point? I hope you said on the y-axis on negative 2 because this is my y-intercept. So you're going to put your first dot at negative 2. And then from there, you're going to count slope, which slope is 3. So if it's a whole number, it means over 1. So you guys are going to go not from the origin, by the way. Most kids make a big mistake and they count from the origin. You need to count from your original dot on the y-axis. From there, you're going to go up 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. And then keep going with that pattern. Too many times you guys stop and just draw a line from there. Show me that you understand that it's a pattern that continues in both directions. So continue to go 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. And you can even go backwards in the other direction. 1, 2, 3 over 1. It'll just make for a much straighter line, and it'll show that you understand how the pattern works. Okay, this one is done. Now, the thing that's new is that we are going to graph a second line on the same graph. So that's the only thing really different in this lesson. So you're going to put your first dot at positive 3 on the y-axis. That's your y-intercept. And then your slope this time is negative 2 over 1. So you're going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and keep going. Continue it back the other direction, up 2 over 1 if you go this way, and then draw a line through it. Also, a little bit of a pet peeve is you guys who forget to put arrows at both ends. Putting an arrow at both ends shows me that you understand that that would continue if my graph were bigger. It would continue in both directions. Lines go on forever. Okay, when it says to write your answer as an ordered pair, an ordered pair is a set of coordinates or is a pair of coordinates. And for this, where would you guess my answer is? What's the answer that's an ordered pair? The answer is the place where the two lines intersect. I always put a bullseye around it just kind of to show that's the answer but then you also need to write it as an ordered pair. So this is the point one, one. It's coordinate point over one, up one. So my actual answer is one, one. And that's the answer we're looking for, not just the graph, but where the graphs intersected. All right, let's try example two. The first one is y equals negative x plus four. So you're gonna put your first dot at positive four on the y-axis. And then this is a negative hidden invisible 1 over 1. So you're going to go down 1 over 1 across the whole graph. Continue down 1 over 1. If you only do it once, your line won't be as straight. Also, it goes up 1 over 1 if you continue in the same direction. Line through it, arrows on both ends. Okay. For the second one, it's a little trickier. It doesn't have a y equals, it has an x equals, and x equals 2. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. Um, I always remember that if it says x equals 2, that's actually talking about where it hits the x-axis. So this is the x-axis, 
and it's going to hit at 2 because x equals 2, so it's going to hit at the x-axis on 2. It's not, it does not have a y, so therefore it is not going to hit this y-axis at all. It's not going to hit the y anywhere. It's never going to hit y. So what does a line look like if it never goes through the y? Not here, not here. It never is going to touch the y-axis. If you said up and down, vertical, you are right. Another way to know this, though, <coughs> excuse me, another way to know this is if you did a quick mini table of x and y values, sorry, there you go. This means that x always equals 2. No matter what, all of these x's have to be 2. 2, 2, 2, 2. These could be different numbers. These could be whatever you want it to be. And then turn these into coordinates and go plot them and see what your line looks like. 2, 0 is right here. 2, 1 is right here. 2, 2 is right here. 2, 3 is right here. And it would continue. So, whichever way you want to do it, if it's an x equals some number, then it is going to be a vertical line on whatever that sum number is. So if it's x equals 2, it's going to be a vertical line on the 2. Okay, so my question is where do they intersect? Bullseye that area, just to so that you know exactly where it's at, and it is over 2, up 2. So my actual answer is the coordinate point 2, 2. Alright, number 3. Number three. Number three is our first dot is going to go on two on the y-axis. And my slope is negative hidden invisible one over one. So down one over one, down one over one, the whole way. And I would go backwards and do the other ones too. Line arrows, don't forget, on both ends. Okay, our next equation is y equals negative 4x minus 1. That's your y-intercept. Negative 1 hits the y-axis at negative 1. From that dot, you count down 4 over 1 because it's negative 4. So I'm going to go down 4 over 1. Um, I can't continue because I ran out of room, but I can continue it going up. So we're going to go up 4 over 1 as long as you go the same direction. That's going to be where I bullseye it. 4 over 1. Okay. That's another reason you want to put all the dots on the graph that fit so that you can draw a perfectly straight line and know exactly where it's going to go through the other line, exactly where they're going to intersect. Okay. And this coordinate point is your answer. So that's negative 1, positive 3. So the answer is negative 1, positive 3. All right, I know this packet looks a little different. We're trying to save paper. So um, your example four is actually your teacher talk. So what I would suggest is to do it kind of like a your turn. Try it on your own now that you've had three other examples. But this is the one that we need to mark off that you have done with the teacher talk. I'll give you a heads up. This one is not an x equals two like it was here. So it is not going to be a vertical line. This time, your teacher talk one is a y equals 2. So think about what you think that means. And if you're not sure, go have a teacher talk about it. Okay, but for now, we're going to turn the page and do the rest of the video lesson. So here we go. It says, Keisha and her friends visit the concession stand at a football game. The stand charges $2 for a hot dog and $1 for a drink. Okay. The friend buys a total of eight items for a total of $11. Tell how many hot dogs and how many drinks they bought. All right, the first thing you guys are going to have to do is be able to set up some equations because then you're going to graph them. Um, you don't have to set up the equations. You can go ahead and graph them directly from not having equations. Um, and maybe we'll do one of each. So for this one, I would say um, let's set up an equation. All right. So how many items did they buy? Let's do our first equation based on items. Our first equation is going to be items, and our next equation is going to be money. So items, money. All right. Our first equation is items. She bought how many hot dogs? It says for a hot dog. So that's one. So one hot dog. We'll call hot dogs x. In fact, it's probably a good idea to write that down. Hot dogs is going to be our x. 
and we will do drinks as the Y. All right, hot dogs drinks, um, hot dogs X drinks Y. All right, how many drinks do we buy? We bought a drink, A again. So one hot dog plus one drink equals a total of, we bought eight items. Okay, there's our first equation. Next equation is money. How much did we spend for X hot dogs? How much did we spend for Y drinks? And how much total money did we spend? So for hot dogs, we spent $2. So that's two for my X, which is hot dogs. Plus we spent $1 for my drinks, which was Y. And we spent a total of $11. All right, now that we have these two equations, we can think about how we're gonna graph it. Okay, in order to graph, in order to graph any of these graphs that we did on this side, you notice that they were all in y equals, y equals, y equals. They were almost all, except this one didn't have a y. But they were all in y equals form. These are not in y equals form, y equals mx plus b, which is called slope intercept form. So we need to get it to that form. So how would I take an x plus a y equals 8 and rearrange it to get y by itself. The only thing you can do to get y by itself is to subtract x and move it over to the other side. So to get y by itself, we subtract x and now we have negative x and positive 8. That's something we can graph because it's in y equals form. It's in slope intercept form. So let's do the same thing with this equation. We have 2x plus y, I just have my y hidden invisible, um, equals 11. So the only thing that we need is to get everything away from y. We need y by itself. So we're going to have to minus 2x to this side. So now it is y equals negative 2x, and that's a positive 11, so plus 11. Okay, now we're left with two equations that we can graph. First thing is a, a dot on your 8 which is your y-intercept, and then that is a negative 1 over 1. So this is going to go all the way down like this. I'm also going to tell you about what this means because it's not just important that you know how to solve these. It's actually important what you're talking about, hot dogs and drinks, and what this line means. So we'll get to that as soon as we graph this. So put your first dot at 11 on the y-axis. And then from there, our slope is down 2 over 1. So it is down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. That's where they bullseye. Down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. And it would keep going somewhere around there. All right. Draw your line. These don't have arrows at both ends because we only have a limited amount of money. We only have $11, so we can't keep going on forever because we're going to run out of money. So what this means is when they intersect, that is how many hot dogs we bought and how many drinks we bought with our $11, how many they would both um, buy. So that is three on the hot dogs, and that is five on the drinks. So the answer would be three hot dogs and five drinks. Oh, it says how many each hot dogs and drinks did they buy? Three hot dogs and five drinks. This is actually a coordinate point also. They intersect at three comma five, but they represent hot dogs and drinks. So that's why that is your answer to that one. Okay, this is going to be our last one in the video. Example six. During school vacation, Josh wants to go bowling and play laser tag. He wants to play six games, but needs to figure out how much of each he can play if he spends exactly $20. Each game of bowling is $2. Each game of laser tag is 4 All right, so let's think this through and think about how we want to set up our equation. Okay, I would first think through just kind of like what we did up here. We had one equation for total items and one equation for total money. I think down here we want to do one equation for total games played 
and one equation for total money that he can spend. All right, it says he wants to play six games. So we don't know how many are going to be bowling and how many are going to be laser tag. Let's call bowling X and laser tag Y. So I don't know how many X bowling games he can do or how many Y laser tags he can do, but I know that I want them to add up to six total. So for our games equation, let's just do X plus Y equals a total of six. Okay, for our money equation, I don't know how many he can play of each, but I know that bowling, which is our X, is going to cost $2. Laser tag, which is our Y, is going to cost $4, and he spends a total of 20 So that is going to be 2X plus, he can play $4 per Y, for a grand total of 20 all right, same thing we had to do on the previous one. They have to be in slope-intercept form, which means y has to be by itself, and it's not. So I want to rearrange x plus y equals 6 to get y by itself. So all I need to do to get y by itself is subtract x. It moves over here, and then y is by itself. Negative x, positive 6. We can definitely graph that equation. Um, let's go ahead and rearrange this equation, too. So, if we need y by itself, the first step is going to be to subtract 2x. They cancel, bring down 4y, this should all be a review. Put your negative 2x first, and that is a positive 20. Don't try to combine that, do not say 18x. That has, this has an x and this one does not, so don't try to combine them. Alright, last step to getting y totally by itself is divide by 4. When you divide by 4, you have to divide this part by 4 and this part by 4. Those are two separate things you're dividing by 4. So that is negative 2 fourths, which can we go ahead and say 2 fourths as a fraction is the same thing as negative half. So I'm just going to call 2 fourths negative half x. 20 divided by 4 is 5. That's a positive 5. So these are our two equations we need to graph. So let's come over here and graph it. The first one is y-intercept is 6, and it's a negative hidden invisible 1 over 1 slope. So we'll go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, all the way. All right, no arrows on the ends because this is a situation where we don't have infinite money or games. The next equation is positive 5 is our y-axis, y-intercept. And then it's going to go down 1 over 2. That slope is down 1 over 2. So you're going to go down 1 over 2, and that's where they bullseye intersect. Keep going, though. Down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, and down 1 over 2. So when you draw your line through this one, what this means in this situation is he could play six games of laser tag and zero games of bowling or five games of laser tag, one game of bowling, or four games of laser tag, two games of bowling. So that's how to read your graphs, and our answer of what he ended up doing is right where they bullseye. This bullseye is two comma four, and if you look at what we're talking about, the two is games of bowling, and the four is games of laser tag. So how many did he play? Two bowling, and four laser tag. Is laser with a Z or, a y or an S? S? <laughs> I don't even know. Not a spelling class, it's okay. All right, so this is your answer to this one. All right, this one is going to be, your example seven is going to be your teacher talk. So you can try it on your own or go see your teacher and have her sign off on that one. Good luck.